All right, welcome ladies and gentlemen. My name is John Garrett. This is a 3D tutorial, mostly for Daz Studio and some Photoshop, where we're going to see how I made this image and how you can use this technique to make your own comics. This is a technique I spotted on DeviantArt many years ago, but it didn't really work out for me back then, so I abandoned it. Later, I decided to go back to it and work out what the problems were as I saw them. With some more elbow grease and a lot of testing, I made some crucial changes to the technique and came up with the kind of style I was hoping for. Now this is going to seem like a lot of steps at first, but eventually you'll just fly through these. And to save time, I've already done the outfitting of the character and the posing, so we're going to concentrate on the materials and the lighting here. Now if you've been using Daz for a while, you're probably used to using the diffuse channel for most of your main textures, but here we're going to use the ambient channel instead. The ambient channel behaves kind of sort of like a light. It doesn't really emit light, but it won't be covered by shadows, and it appears fairly flat, which is what we want here. This is why we're calling it the ambient method. Now before we do anything, you should make sure you're using the older 3D light rendering engine and not the newer iRay renderer. The reason for this is that the iRay renderer is physically accurate and it's built for realism, which is counter to our purpose here. We're trying to make a comic illustration. So you can confirm your render engine by going to your render settings tab and making sure 3D light is chosen in the engine dropdown. So with this done, our first step is going to be to apply the correct shader to our character and the props. I'm going to do this for a couple of items, then I'll time lapse the rest to save time. Okay, I'm going to start with my figure, who is a Genesis version 1 figure I've named Jolien. So let's see the render of this base figure before we start making changes. We can see this image is pretty flat, we have no lighting set up. We got a bunch of default textures. So far, it's looking kind of drab and not suitable for a comic. It's kind of failing at looking real right now. And we need to go the other way and make this thing look like an illustration. So let's start changing this. I'm going to go select the figure in the scene tab. Then I'm going to select her in the surfaces tab over on the right as well. Now at the top of this surfaces pane, we can see the shader is set to multiple. This is because the Genesis figures usually load with two shaders applied, the Uber Surface shader, which is the one we want, and the DAZ default shader, which we want to change. Just from experience, I know the DAZ default shader is usually applied to these last two down here, the eyelash and the tear. Everything else has the correct surface, i.e. the Uber Surface shader but these two don't. Let's take a look at the differences between these two shaders. If we look at the tier and we look over here on the right at these channels, we can see we've got diffuse, specular, ambient, uh, further down we've got bump and displacement, pretty much what we expect to see. Um, normally this works fine, but the problem that we're going to run into is that even though we can set these down to zero, Ultimately, we can't turn them all the way off. This can cause problems later by rendering diffuse and specular information that we don't want. So, to contrast this, let's look at one of the surfaces using the Uber Surface shader. Right away, we can see we have a lot of green buttons. These are going to activate or completely turn off these channels. This is the kind of control that we need here. So, to change these Daz Studio, bottom shaders or bottom surfaces with the DAS Studio shader over to the Uber Surface shader. What we have to do is select them, then jump over to our content library. We got to find that Uber Surface shader. The quickest way to do that is usually to just type it in in the search field. So I'll hit return there. So it's going to come up with whatever you've got installed. This should be installed by default for you. Now hopefully you only have one of these. I have two because I have a fairly old install. One of these is using the old uh, script format and 
one of them is using the newer one. As far as I know, they both work, but I try to find the one with the newer uh, .duf extension, which will be easy to find if I just get the tooltip to pop up here eventually on one of them. Okay, that's the DSA. We don't want that one. We want this one. So um, what I'm going to do is double click on this icon while I have the node in the scene tab selected and the surface over in the surfaces tab selected. It's going to go very quick and over here in the surfaces tab we'll be able to see that I've now changed that shader to the uber surface shader. Now if you want to do all surfaces without selecting them you can command double click this icon and you'll get this material preset load options window. On PC you would control double click and then you could just say alright I want to do all surfaces. Um, if that works for you that's fine. Normally I usually just select all these that I want anyway so I usually forget about this window but I just thought I'd show it. Anyway with those shaders changed over to the uber surface we now have full control over all the surfaces on the Genesis figure. So what we're going to do next is turn off any channels that we don't need which is going to be pretty much all of the other ones except for ambient and opacity. As a general rule you will want to leave opacity alone. So I'm just going to select Jolien at the top of the surfaces tab. Then I'm going to go down the line and turn off every channel I don't need. So I don't need diffuse. I do need opacity so I'll leave that. No bump. Um, displacement is off. Specular I'm not going to want. Specular 2. Um, when it comes to these uh, figures, ambient I will need eventually. Uh, when it comes to these figures there's going to be a lot of these extra uh, channels down here toward the bottom that are really concerned more with skin. It seems uh, these are usually turned on. Fresnel, we don't need velvet, we don't need right now. But the Genesis figures usually activate these by default. So we'll turn those all off. Everything's looking good but what I want to do is get rid of a lot of textures I don't need. So we've got textures loading here that I'm going to dump. I'm going to dump these. You'd be surprised how little you actually need to make these comics. Specular 2, I don't want. I don't want these textures because I don't want anything but the lighting itself to control uh, the specularity. I don't want a map controlling where that specularity goes. Okay, bump. We don't need that. Okay, now we're pretty much, we're going to leave our opacity maps alone. Just as a general rule, just leave those alone. Okay, so we are going to get rid of some of these diffuse textures. But first, I just want to show you a little bit of a challenge that we have here. So, I'm going to select the face. This is my face texture. As a rule, I want to just use color where I can instead of textures. I would say... Um, wherever you can, dump those diffuse textures, those, those default textures that come with your models, that come with your props, dump them. For the most part, they're concerned with realism. They're not concerned with making a comic. And they defeat the purpose of making a comic because they have shading and lighting information kind of baked into them. And it conflicts with the lighting of your scene. And even if people don't understand what they're seeing, on some level they'll understand that something is wrong. So you want to get rid of that. But if you look at this face picture, you can see that uh, I have a problem. And the problem is she's got eyebrows. And if I just delete this face image, my character is not going to have any eyebrows. So I really don't want to do that. I mean, I have to do that. And it kind of depends. If you see my character here, she's kind of got some bangs going. She's far away from the camera. I could probably get away with not giving her eyebrows. But just to show you guys what I normally do, I'm going to uh, go over to Photoshop. Here's the texture that I use. It's completely flat. And you might hear me say that from time to time. You want a flat texture. Even if I'm not using just pure color, this image is just going to act like just a, a regular base color that I would put into the diffuse channel. 
So what we can see is I just took that base texture and I drew some eyebrows on top of this flat color. So I'm going to use this for the face and then for the body parts where you can see her skin, I'm just going to use this flat square for a texture. Now let's go back and load that in. But remember, I don't want my diffuse. I actually want to get rid of this right now. So we can see over here, that texture is completely gone. I'm going to go down to my ambient. Eventually, there we go. So I'm going to go load that texture. And here it is, basic face. And I'm going to change my ambient color all the way to white so it shows everything and kick the strength up to 100. So unfortunately, this is the expected result. Uh, it goes completely white. For whatever reason, your ambient textures will not show in the viewport. So it doesn't really matter. It'll render fine. But I find that I like to see what's really going on. So this is another good thing about our Uber Surface shader. I can go up here to Diffuse. I can load that texture into the diffuse channel it shows up over here in the viewport but since I have this button off it will not render at all so I don't have to worry about it combining with my ambient okay so that's that for the same thing for the arms I'm going to again delete this texture so let's go down to my ambient which is already on I'll kick this strength up I'm going to browse and get that base body texture. So there that is. Let's kick this up to 100. And now that's looking correct, but just so I can see. All right. You're starting to see where this is going. We got some flat, <laughs> very flat, blocky, blocked out areas here. That's what we want, believe it or not. All right. And for the eyes, Here's where, you know, you can cheat. Um, if I have a close-up on eyes, I have a, a very flat eye texture that I use. If we mouse over this, we can see we got a lot of details in these eyes that really aren't necessary for um, a cartoon or a comic. I have a very flat texture, but if it's something like this where she's far away from the camera and it's really not necessary, I'll just take this color or this uh, this texture and I'll dump that right into the ambient so again let me make this white I'm gonna find those uh, eyes eyes M ambient strength okay so that's gonna render this base texture this diffuse won't render because this is off that's really all we need for her oh I think we have to um, for the lip I like to just add in a little bit of color um, just so we can see something different in the diffuse so we can see it and also in the ambient so I mean you probably can't tell from here but, but that's gonna show up for us then um, I think the last thing we have to do is the teeth which I'm just gonna make completely white in her mouth on me completely black all right so there's that and I just want to do a couple more items just so you can see a couple of challenges we might have now I'm gonna go over to the scene tab and I'm gonna select the hair so again I select all this hair Dash studio default I need to change this back over to my content library I've got my uber surface shader double click very quickly it's changed to the uber surface shader so what I'm going to do, I'll start from the top. I'm going to get rid of all these textures except for the opacity. I really need that opacity on this hair because that's that's actually creating the outline of the hair. So uh, I'm going to turn that off. Opacity, I'll leave alone. I'm going to turn down diffuse strength too. So bump, get rid of these. There's no reason for these to even be in here for Daz to even be wasting time checking these images. Specular all the way down. 
Okay, that's looking good. Let's get rid of this ambient thing. Now for here, I'm just going to use pure color to make the hair. All right, there's really nothing else here. That's really all there is to it for that. If you can get away with color, use color. That's the way I do it. Uh, I'd rather not even use textures if I don't have to. But sometimes you can't get away with that. If you need a texture, make it as flat as possible so that your lighting itself is what's going to make the modeling and make the detail for you. So that takes care of the hair. The very last one I'm going to do before I time lapse the rest of this is the shirt because I just want to show you guys a couple things. For this shirt, this is actually a really good prop uh, made by an artist named Luth Bell. I got quite a bunch of Luth Bell stuff. This is uh, Future Wilderness and it, I mean it's really good stuff but the textures are uh, not conducive to my comic so I have to get rid of these but first I'm going to change these over to my uber surface shader okay so I gotta go down the line again here I'm gonna get rid of all these textures really no reason for me to do that but <laughs> once in a while I just like to make the colors uh, uniform when I see a question mark there bump is off that's fine let's get rid of these bumps goodbye displacement and a normal map will get rid of that if you're not familiar a normal map is similar to a bump map in that they both trick the camera into thinking that uh, the surface has uh, differences in the height when they really don't. Let's turn this off. Keep scrolling. Okay, so I got to get my ambient on. He's got a few ambient uh, textures here. I'm going to take out. I'm going to get my ambient strength all the way up. I'm pretty sure that's it. Oh, let's get rid of those. Now those wouldn't show anyway because the reflection was off, but um, uh, I just don't want Daz to have to waste any processing power on those at all. So what I'm going to do is load up a texture that I made specifically for this. And so I want to show you guys the texture. I'm going to go over to my bridge. This is the shirt texture I made. <laughs> it looks pretty terrible right here, but you'll see that this is the base texture. This is the texture that comes with it. And like I said, it's actually pretty good. It has a lot of shading information, a lot of detail in it, but it's just not good for comics. So I don't really need all this. So instead, I'm making a flat color and I'm just gonna, I'm just making flat blocks where I need them to go. And this is gonna be perfectly fine. It's gonna work out, uh, you know, to work with the lights that I need. So I'm gonna load that up here. So let's click on that shirt. Okay, so that's in there. Remember, we won't see it um, because the ambient textures won't show in the viewport. So for me to see that, I'm gonna load it up here. All right. Then for the zip, what I'm gonna do is, um, change that ambient there we go I have a color already made for that so that should work anyway this is really it for this we don't have to do too much to these you, you can see that how quickly you could move through this once you get the hang of it what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through these I'm going to finish the pants, the, the boots, and the gun, and all this other stuff, gloves and such, and I'll time lapse it so you guys can, can see it, but it would probably take too much time to just go through all this. It's just the same as what I did now. So I'm going to get back with you guys in just a minute.
All right, and we're back. So, after all that, let's take a look at what the final render looked like. So, that's pretty much basically what we saw in the viewport. And believe it or not, this is what we want. We want a flat block of color. Um, we don't really want much detail in it. When you think of how comics are made, I mean, they're, they're built up with, you know, penciler drawing these lines, inker inking over the lines, the colorist is trying to flesh it out, and uh, they're build it's a process of building up, and that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to start with this flat render, and we're going to add detail to it in stages. So, with this done, this is the first part done, and we're going to move on to the shading next for, um, uh, I call it the shadow render, and you guys will see that uh, in the next part. All right, moving on. This is gonna be our shadow file where we're gonna add in the modeling. And uh, by modeling, I mean light modeling like a 2D artist would do, not mesh modeling. Uh, we're gonna flesh out the shapes and add in some much needed depth to this pretty flat image right now. So first, I'm gonna select everything in my scene. And I'm pretty sure we can see everything out in this first level of the scene, but just in case, you have parented items that are hitting, hidden. The best thing to do is go to the Scene tab, the Scene menu, and choose Expand, Expand All. That will open up everything in the Scene tab, and you can select it all. It's probably overkill, but this way you definitely won't miss anything. So I'll Shift-click down to the bottom, and that's going to get everything selected. So that's all the nodes. Now I need to select all the surfaces. So over in the surfaces tab, every single surface should now be visible. So I'm going to click and then shift click to select them all. Now you can try just selecting all at the top, but I've had instances where this inexplicably doesn't get all the surfaces. So I usually just shift click them all to get them. So with all these selected, to get our shadows, we're going to need to use the specular channel. That means we're going to go through, turn everything off except for that and opacity. So I'm going to start at the top. I'm going to be removing all the textures, again except opacity, turning all the colors to white, which is not necessarily you know, needed, but it's just something I do. And I'll come back to the specular channel after I'm done. So let's go through here, get rid of that, change all this to white. I'm going to change uh, diffuse all the way down, leave opacity alone. All this is mostly gone. We don't need any normal maps. Uh, I'll come back to specular, but I'm going to need that on. Okay, specular two we don't need. Ambient we don't need right now. Let's turn that all the way down. Okay, reflection we don't need. That's off, so we don't need to turn that down. Renell, this stuff doesn't show up in the viewport. Okay, so I should be good. What I'm gonna do, actually something's still showing here. Let's see what I got. Oh, it's my specular, hello. Anyway, I'm gonna turn this all the way up to white. I'm gonna kick the strength all the way up to 100, glossiness, down to zero. So as we can see, this doesn't look like much here. Um, matter of fact, mostly everything's disappeared. The reason for this is because we don't have any lights in the scene. With the ambient textures, they kind of glow, they kind of you know show up by themselves without lights. So we didn't need them. But now they're critical. So what we're gonna do is start adding those in. I'm gonna go back to my scene tab. And I'm going to collapse all this stuff. All right. And I'm going to add a distant light. Now, these distant lights are going to be your friend when it comes to these types of renders. So you can kind of see where this is going already. I'm going to go to my universal tool just so we can see these lights. Um, let me move this around. So with the distant light, it really doesn't matter where you place it. What matters with these 
is the direction and uh, the brightness, the intensity. So I can move this wherever around. The thing with the distant light is it's kind of like a sunlight or an area light. The rays coming out of the distant light are parallel. So your scene is going to be evenly lit um, as if those rays are coming from the sun. So what I'm going to do is go over to parameters, go to my rotation, and let's just move this around so you can see we're starting to flesh out this character. And we're going to be able to use these shadows um, over the top to composite in Photoshop over the top of our flat render. All right, so then what I normally do, we can go look at the light. Here I could change the intensity, I can change the brightness. Sometimes it matters more than other times. If I needed to, I could change the color. And usually I would avoid this though, because I like to make my color casts in Photoshop just because it's easier for me to do it there. I like to leave these completely white just so I have a lot of options later on. Anyway, there's a setting also for shadows here. And even though I call this the shadow render, the shadow file, I don't turn this on unless absolutely necessary. See, this is going to make a cast shadow, like the shadow you would see on the ground or on the wall behind somebody. Um, unfortunately, those look cool, but they come with a cost. They make your render a little bit longer, sometimes a lot longer, depending on what's in your scene. Sometimes when there's hair, we've got hair here, they can really slow things down with transparency. So unless I really need it, I leave that shadow off. What I'm going to do now, is I'm going to add in a couple more lights just so we can see what I normally do. So now I got another light. What I might do is make one of these pretty much come from behind. I want to make a rim light effect. So we see I've kind of got that. Assuming I set it back to where it was. There we go. That looks good. Now this one I might turn back and turn the intensity down. Let's turn that to 20 or so. Let's get another one out here. It's really fun to play around with these. Usually what happens is I will end up with, I'd say, nine or ten of these renders. And I know I won't use them all, but when I bring them into Photoshop, I will composite them in and just see which one looks good. I usually have a, an idea of what I want, but there's times when I might make one from above or from below just to see how that lighting is going to look. And uh, sometimes that might make or break it even when I wasn't planning on that. All right, so another thing I'll do here in a situation like this is I'll add a point light because her gun is going to be firing and I'm going to want it to look like light is coming out of here. So a point light is really, unlike a, a distant light, it emits light from, a, from its center kind of omnidirectionally. So I'm going to kind of simulate a gun burst by putting this light in front of this gun barrel. Let's go to my front view. All right, so that should pretty much put that light almost where I need it. Close enough. Let's go back to my camera view. Okay, so that's basically the gist of what I would do. And Actually, I've gone through this four or five times, maybe more even. So I already have the lights set up the way that I want. And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to load those lights in that I saved in another file. So first, I'm actually going to delete these ones. Let's delete. Then I'm going to merge in my light file that I saved. All right. So that's what I came up with before. It looked pretty good. Let's check out a render of this and see what it looks like. I'm going to open up this window so we can get a full screen view of how this is going to look.
Okay, so you can see how that's going to work out. I'm going to apply this over the top of that flat image or flat ambient image and it should give us some depth. So I could stop here, but what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to use some bump mapping to add a little bit of texture to this render. So let's take a look at the bump maps that I'm going to use. I'm going to go over to Photoshop. And again, I'm back on my, this is my shirt file um, that we used before. And I told you I didn't want to use these textures. So before I filled these with red, now I filled them with gray and black and white lines. So this is going to be a bump map. And what a bump map does is it tricks the camera, tricks the renderer into thinking that surfaces are either raised or lowered when they're actually really flat. And it usually would like to have a grayscale image and 50% gray, which in RGB would be 128, 128, and 128 in the RGB channels. 50% gray is telling it, leave this surface alone. So that's here in these areas, uh, in the red areas, it's going to leave that part alone. Then everywhere else in those gray blue areas, I've got white and black lines. So the white areas are going to raise, the black areas are going to lower. And we can switch over. Here's my pants uh, file and I'm doing the same thing there. I've got the red areas with 50% gray. So they're going to be left alone. And again, I've got uh, white lines that I made with a uh, halftone filter here in Photoshop that are going to um, present a raised surface to the renderer. Now let's get back into Daz. I'm going to go ahead and load those in. So here's my shirt file. OK, I need to go there. Uh, where is that bump? Back up here. Let's turn that on. And I got a browse for that. And shirt bump. OK. And I already have the strength on those. So I know I want that to be 25%. The minimum I'm going to leave alone. The maximum I will change to 0.2. And I'm also going to add a bump to the pants. OK, those are all the same. Let's go find that pants bump. Now this one I set to 10%. And the maximum was 0.5. So let's go ahead and do that render. And once it gets going here, I'm going to go ahead and do a full screen on these. So you might not be able to tell right now exactly what's different. But um, we're going to see a way to do that in just a little bit here. So I'm going to close out. We're going to compare these using the render editor. So we're going to go to render, render editor. We can see I've got two renders here that I just did. So for my first primary image, I'm going to use render one. For the secondary image, I'm going to pick render two. Then I'm going to choose compare over here. And I'm also going to do a vertical wipe. Let's go ahead and zoom in a bit so we can see better. So I'm at 50% in between these. I'm going to scroll over to 100%. This is the one with no bump. You can kind of see that it's really smooth. Let's go back here. Here's the one that does have the bump in it. And we can see that there's some lines, a little bit of tooth and a little bit of texture. Maybe not so much in the shirt, but I was, I was fine with that. But um, we definitely did introduce a little grit and a little variation in the shadow. So I'm going to go ahead and accept that. Now you can also load those same bump textures. You can load those into the specular channel too, but I found that I liked the, the way that it worked with the bump a lot better. Specular does, it gives you a lighter variation. So uh, there's only one more thing I want to do, and that's that I want to bring in some ambient textures to um, kind of mask a little bit of ambient channel intensity that I want to bring in. So as I mentioned before, the ambient channel, it acts like a light. 
it won't be covered in shadows. And that's going to help us here in areas where I want it to look like something might be bright or glowing. Um, the ambient channel is going to cut through that shadow layer and just look like it has an intensity to it. So for the pants, I want to go to my bridge and um, let's see, where am I at here? Boulders. Textures. So let's open up my ambient textures. And they don't look like much, but these are masks where the black is going to block the ambient color that I put in the channel. And it, this white area is the only place that ambient is going to be allowed through. And the same thing for this shirt one. Only here where it's white will my ambient color be allowed through. The black is going to block all the rest of it. So back in Daz, I'm going to turn on ambient. I'm going to go browse for that ambient. Uh, what have I got here? The pants. So I got pants ambient. So again, there's that file. My color is white. I'm going to kick the strength up to 100. It's going to look bad in the viewport because ambient kind of blows everything out in the viewport, but that's going to render OK. Remember, our textures, ambient textures, won't show any effect here. So that's fine. Then I'm going to go back to my shirt area, turn on ambient. I'm going to go find that um, shirt ambient. Kick this all the way up. And again, it's going to do the same thing. So that's fine. But we're going to go ahead and add a few more places. I was about to render, but I forgot. I've got to do a little bit more um, ambient changing here. So here on the clip lock and on the grip, or I mean on the gun blast, I'm going to turn on ambient, set that to white, kick it all the way up. And finally, I want to do the armband. And luckily the armband, I can just go to the trim area. I'm going to kick that up, change this to white. All right, that's what I need. Now it's time to render once again. And when we're done with this render, we're going to go back to our render editor and do a quick uh, scrub comparison so you guys can see exactly what changed and what a difference it made. It's kind of a handy trick that you can also use for insignias and um, computer screens and such. All right, let's close out of that. I'm going to go to Render, Render Editor. So now I'm going to put in Render 2 and then Render 3. Let's compare. Let's do a vertical wipe and zoom in. So we can see, I mean, keep an eye on here. I've got that piping. So this is the one without the ambient um, masks going on in there. Now we're going to go back. Now you can see what happens when they are in there. It's blocking out those areas so those aren't getting any shadow whatsoever. I don't know if you can see the effect so much in the gun. Yeah, you can see it there and there. So at least you're getting an idea of why we did that. It can give you some cool effects on, you know, characters, uh, insignias and, and bright stuff on their uniforms or whatever. All right, so let's back out of that. So at that point, I think that's looking pretty good. So we have a shadow render. And like I said before, I might do nine or ten of these, you know, four or five, depending on the the scene, the panel, whatever I'm doing. If I'm not sure, I'll just do a bunch because they go fairly quickly and I can just turn them on and off in Photoshop and I might I might not use them. I might use one or two of them together in, with different blend modes. So that just shows you how to do that. It's pretty quick. After this, we're going to get into making some basic lines and getting some lines uh, out of this file. So and this is for free without using any of the 
any of the uh, add-on tools you might see in the DAS store. So, okay, let's get moving into that line file and we'll pick up there. Okay, so we're going to make some lines here. And again, this is super duper basic. Um, there's better ways in the form of add-ons that you can buy from the DAS store. But if you just want something down and dirty and free, you can try this way. Basically, we're going to use DAS's cartoon renderer to hopefully give us some lines we can work with. And I know some of you are probably saying, what? Cartoon mode? You have us doing all this stuff, why don't we just use cartoon mode? Well, cartoon mode is very, very limited, and Daz has kind of hidden it away, I suspect because it doesn't give great results for its intended purpose. Anyway, to activate cartoon mode, we have to do a little bit of digging. First, we have to go to our render settings tab, and then we have to go to the flyout menu on the right, and we have to select show hidden properties. That's going to give us a style menu here under the general heading. So we click on this and over on the right we have one option. Change from default to cartoon. Okay. So that's simple enough but we're not done. The unfortunate part or the first unfortunate part is that the DAS cartoon renderer doesn't work well with other shaders. It only really plays nice with the default DAS shader. And if you recall, we spent a bit of time at the very beginning specifically changing every surface from the DAS default over to the Uber Surface shader. And now we have to undo that. And unfortunate part number two is that it isn't immediately clear how we're going to do that, how we're going to revert to the default DAS shader. There isn't a built in script like for the Uber Surface shader. So, to get around this, we're going to use a DAS feature called Shader Presets. To start, we're going to need something that actually has the default DAS shader. Since nothing currently existing in our scene does, that means we're going to have to add something. So I'll go to Create, New Primitive. And in the menu that pops up, I'm just going to leave this cube. It doesn't really matter how big it is or where it is. We just need it to pop in with the default shader. So I'll accept this. And then I'm going to select it. I'm going to go back over to my surfaces tab. Select the surface. And just confirm that it's using DAS Studio default. Alright. Since it is, now I'm going to save this as a shader preset. By choosing File, Save As. Shader preset. Okay, so it's going to ask me where I want to save this. Here it's kind of defaulting to my scripts folder, which is in my DAS content directory. It's probably a good place to save it. So I'm just going to type in here, you know, default DAS shader, or I could spell it correctly. All right, so, which I already did, so I'll just name it too. Once I save it, I'm gonna get this shader preset save options. I'm gonna recommend you leave almost all of these alone, but uncheck opacity. So that means when I apply this shader later on, it's gonna leave the opacity alone. And remember in our previous areas, uh, we generally wanna leave opacity alone. So, I'm going to accept now. Okay, now I saved it, but yet I'm still not done because I have to tell Daz about this new shader. So, the way you would do that is to go to your content library, and then in the flyout menu, you would choose scan known directories for files. And you're going to get this window that's warning you that depending on the size of your drive and how many files and folders, blah, 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 it's going to take a long time. And which it actually does on my machine because I've got quite a few uh, folders and files. So I'm not going to let it run right now. I've already done this. So right now I'm just going to cancel this, but you would choose accept and let it, let it run. Okay. So 
Incidentally, if you don't know where your DAS content directory is, you can actually go here and and choose Content Directory Manager. And then in the windows that pop up, you can uh, open up these triangles, disclosure triangles. It'll show you all the directories that DAS knows about. And I mean, this is a mess because I'm kind of lazy. I don't really clean up these these directories, but yours probably won't look like this. But if you need to know where, where it is, that will give you the path. All right, so I'll cancel out of that. So anyway, it's finally time to start making some lines. So I'm going to go back over to my scene tab and let's get rid of this cube. Um, get rid of that. What I'm going to do is open up everything using expand, expand all. I'm going to select and then shift select so I get everything just to be sure. Then over in the surfaces tab, I'm going to select and then shift select to get everything. Now I got to go back to my content library. So if you scanned it and you knew the name of it, you could probably just type it in here. Uh, I went and categorized mine before and um, I called it DAS shader. So I have my DAS default shader here. I'm just going to double click on this. And then we'll see in the center, you see everything changed. It went back to a flat kind of gray uh, setting. It's gray and featureless. We can confirm over in the surfaces tab that everything is back to DAS def uh, Studio default shader. And that's what we want. So now, I'm going to go to all these surfaces. I'm going to turn the diffuse and specular and everything way down. And once again, I want my ambient to be turned all the way up, but it's going to be white. All right. That's pretty much what we want. Everything in the viewport should be white now. And finally, before we render, I'll just collapse all of this. Let's get rid of these lights because they really don't serve any purpose here. So I'll delete those. They don't really make any difference in this type of a cartoon render, so you don't have to worry about those. Anyway, I'm going to hit render. And you'll see here the kind of lines we get. They're not perfect. Um, there's really not much control that you have over these. You, it's, you kind of get what you get, but it, it's good if you need something. Um, it's quick and dirty and, uh, you know, not the most stylish, but it's something you can lay over the top of it. And sometimes, sometimes you hit big and sometimes you just have to say, all right, well, if I need something else, I'll have to go pony up for one of the uh, add-ons, you know, PW Tune or one of the other ones that's out there. So another thing, too, about this Daz uh, cartoon renderer, if you have walls or floors, it can be difficult because those might come out as black. And uh, it took me a lot to discover this, but sometimes uh, uh, anything that's over 70 degrees angle to the camera, it can come out completely black. And that's just a consequence of the way that uh, the Daz cartoon shader draws its outlines. There's nothing you can do about that. So if it turns out that you've got something in the background that's coming out completely black or your floor is completely black, you might just have to hide it or delete it just to get around it for now. And uh, I've had to do that many times, unfortunately. But just so, just so you know, um, it's not you. You know, that's, that's just the way that it works. So you didn't make a mistake. <laughs> anyway, you can see how it worked out. What we're going to do is take this into Photoshop. We're going to lay this on top of our, uh, our ambient and our shadow render and hopefully we're going to come out with something uh, pretty decent so uh, we're going to close up here this is pretty much our last part of Daz and we're going to jump into the Photoshop okay we're in the home stretch here and it's time to do some compositing here in Photoshop and if you don't have Photoshop, uh, not to fear, you could get the, uh, the free GIMP program. Go to gimpgimp.org, and that's a free open source image editing program. So you're not out in the cold. You can, you can do anything in GIMP that you could do in Photoshop. It's probably not as polished, though. So no worries. 
Anyway, a quick disclaimer, I went back and I rendered these out larger off camera before bringing them into Photoshop. Uh, before when I was rendering those, they were small enough, I just wanted them to pop up on the screen without me having to resize. But now I render these out larger. When you do that, you have to readjust your bump settings. That's one thing that you'll get used to is constantly adjusting those depending on the size you want to render at and how close or far away the bump surface is from the camera. So just to throw that out there. So anyway, to get into this, we can see I've got three layers here and I've got my ambient, shadow, and line. So what I'm gonna do is change the blending modes on these layers. Here's my blending modes. I'm gonna change those so we can composite or combine these together. So first, let's select my shadow layer. I'm gonna turn this on. So right now it's in a normal blending mode, so I can't see anything through it, but what I'm gonna do is change it to color burn right here. Okay, and we can see how that pops. And this is kind of what you gotta be seeing in your mind when you're doing those shadows and uh, similar in, in Daz, because it's kind of hard when you're doing this, you're like, where is this going? Well, you're going for this. So, um, and I'm using color burn. Sometimes, depending on what the comic is or what it what it's about, I might try something else. Uh, this one I thought it looked best. You can try multiply, but I don't think that looks very good here. It's multiply is usually kind of washed out. Linear burn usually works better for me. It's it's a richer black, but in this case. Um, it was a little bit too intense. I didn't I didn't want it that dark and color burn just seemed to fit what I wanted here. So you can play around with those modes and any one of them could end up giving you what you wanted. So uh, you have to determine that for your own pieces. Then to continue, let's click on the line file, the line layer. So here I am going to go for multiply. And you can see we've got some lines there. It uh, you can see it does it does add something. We got some decent lines this time. It doesn't always work that well, but uh, in this case, I really like the way it looked. So uh, let me just show you a little bit of the difference between multiply and linear burn. L look at our gun here. If we change it to linear burn, so I'm getting a richer black, but it's filling in more, and I didn't want that for the gun. So I decided to go back to multiply and just get a little bit more detail there. But that's something you can um, keep an eye on in your own stuff. Although I do think from using GIMP, I don't think that it has a linear burn. I don't remember for sure, but I remember looking and not quite finding it. So that might not be in there, but multiply should work just fine. Now with this done, I'm going to add a little bit more style to this. I want to throw in a halftone pattern. So the first thing I'm going to do is make a new layer and I'm going to fill this with white. So then I'm going to make sure my foreground and background colors are black and white because my halftone is going to use these colors. And I'm going to go to filter, filter gallery. Uh, and remember before I said I made those lines using the halftone filter, but I'm going to change it from line to dot. So I'm getting a ton of dots here. I'll click OK. So that fills in. Believe it or not, that's what I wanted. I'm going to use a layer mask now to hide this layer. So down here at the bottom, I've got my layer mask button. But what I'm going to do is hold down Option, which would be Alt on PC. Um, and then I'm going to add a layer mask that hides everything. So now this layer mask is black. Uh, that means it's blocking this layer. So what I want to do now is just paint in the dots where I want them to show. So I'm going to switch to my brush tool and then what I want to do is change the blend mode to overlay. And as I discovered 50% opacity worked fine for me. And let's just zoom in a little bit here so we can see. But I'm going to paint with white on this black um, layer mask. So that's going to uh, reveal the layer dots. So we can see I'm starting to get some dots in here. 
and um, you know sometimes they don't look too good close up but they might look better when you zoom back out yeah I'm going to just increase my brush size a bit and I put some dots in here just something to give it a little bit of a comic feel and I'm going to command click on this to get my selection so I, I don't go off the uh, figure and just paint in a bunch of these dots you gotta really determine how big you want these to be sometimes you want these dots to really just darken an area and not look like a bunch of dots but just kind of suggest that old comic feel and sometimes a lot of comics I read now I mean those dots are huge they're just like bam here's your half tone buddy so uh, it's up to you but I really I really liked that look and it just kind of a little bit subtle anyway you might notice in some plugins in Daz uh, PW tune and I think other ones they have halftone options in there where you can render and then get halftones um, you can adjust the sizes and the, the shapes and such I would recommend you not do that in the render I always do it here because I have more control of it here for example if I did a render with with halftone patterns in it and then I got all the way here and I decided I don't really like those half tones. Now I got to go all the way back to Daz and re-render. But here, I can paint these in wherever I want. I can turn that layer off if I want to. Um, I have a lot more control, and it's just quicker for me to do it that way. And another recommendation I'll make: I, I just made this now, but I would recommend not using this uh, Photoshop half tone filter. Actually, I would recommend. Google searching and I just search on you know free halftone pattern or free halftone Photoshop brush and there's some really good ones out there and I've got quite a collection just from searching a lot of these sites where they have free textures and I might just drag those in and brush them in I noticed that the Photoshop halftone sometimes it comes out looking like a bunch of squares instead of looking like um, a bunch of dots like I wanted this looks kind of weird like a, a pattern of squares or diamonds sometimes sometimes it's okay sometimes I really 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 want dots so uh, that's just my two cents on that so what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna make another layer down here let me just uh, deselect and I'm going to make this background that we saw originally I think I want that to be more yellow so I'm just gonna use a gradient Choose my gradient tool. I'm going to change it to a circle. So I'm going to make white my foreground. And let's just drag out a gradient behind her. There. That's what we wanted. So we give her a little bit of background here. And then uh, I already made all the effects of uh, the text and the effects and stuff. Because this video is already going pretty long. So I wanted to have all this ready. So I turned all this. Uh, I'll turn this all on. And one thing I'll say is that I would not make this text in Photoshop normally. Normally I would export this picture to Illustrator. When I make my panels, I, I export them out of here, bring them into Illustrator, and then I make my text in there because you just have better control over it. Um, in this case, I had to make these um, words with the balloons and such. I used um, vector shapes to get them pointy nice and pointy because otherwise when you just make them sometimes you can't get those points with the rasters and it's kind of a hassle here illustrator does the vectors a lot better and you can have a lot more control and better text effects text on a path and all sorts of things and additionally I made this um, uh, sound effect as a vector shape too just so I could resize it and move it around without losing any quality so aside from that we're pretty much done here guys this is pretty much it I mean honestly I I would do a lot more here I mean I probably would have made a background and all sorts of things uh, with this but again we're going pretty long I just want to say that uh, uh, this goes pretty quick this is a long video but once you start doing this stuff once you start getting into it you'll be flying through these steps and you'll be making your own shortcuts and such so you'll be getting to this point a lot quicker and I just you know want to recap 
so first in Daz, we learned how to change our shader and set the textures and surfaces to use the ambient channel with the uber surface shader. Then we moved on to using the specular channel to make shadows. And then we made basic lines using the Daz built-in cartoon renderer. And finally, we brought it all here to Photoshop and combined it all. So congratulations if you have hung in here this whole time. I appreciate it. Um, please subscribe if you want to see more. I'm going to hopefully be doing a weekly video of these comic pieces, but I'm going to try to make them shorter than this. I know uh, time is uh, important to everybody, so I'll try to keep these a bit more brief. And finally, I'm going to be coming out with a video course that goes a lot more in depth in this and some of my other comic methods that I'd like to share. So if you're interested in that, please click the link in my description. Head over to uh, comic-creator.org where you can get on my mailing list and be notified when the course hits. You can also see a text write-up of this tutorial over there and you can download this final Photoshop file. You can check it out for yourself. Um, if you make something using this method, I'd like to see it. So be sure to follow the link in the description and, and leave your link for me and others to see. I don't think you can leave a link in these YouTube comments, but uh, maybe you can. Um, other than that, let me know if you have any questions in the comment section. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. So, at last, thanks again for watching. Um, my name is John Garrett. I will see you guys next time.